Buongiorno a tutti. Good morning, everyone. My name is Josh, and today I will be taking over the Office of Global Education's Snapchat for Takeover Tuesday. I'm studying this semester at Georgetown's Villa La Balze in Fiesole, Italy, and I'm going to be showing you a glimpse into the life of a Hoya on uh, this hilltop. To get to know me just a little bit better, here's my Georgetown intro. Uh, again, my name's Josh Sirwa. I'm a junior in the School of Foreign Service, majoring in global business with a certificate in women's and gender studies. Uh, and I'm originally from the metropolis of Salem, Missouri. Uh, it's been a wonderful three and a half, four weeks here at the villa, and I'm so excited to show you all around. So I think it's fair to say that the villa is iconic at Georgetown. Everyone knows it exists and wishes they had their own turn at being here at Villa La Balde, but you're welcome. I'm gonna give you a glimpse into what the life looks like. So firstly, Villa La Balde, what does that mean? Literally translates to house on the cliffs. And for good reason, uh, you can see that again, we're not in Florence, Italy, we're in Fiesole, Italy. However, we do have a pretty bomb view of Florence. You can see right down into the city. I'm here in one of our main gardens here at the villa. It's an absolute wonderful spot where we sometimes hold some of our classes with professors. But again, you look around and you get that total panoramic view of the city. It never gets old. Well, all right, it is time to officially start the day. I'm gonna head in and grab some breakfast. I'll have a couple classes as well as a guest lecture to attend today before I head down into the city uh, to get a haircut, grab some gelato, and show you all some of the best sights in Florence. So I'm walking back from class number one of the day, which was intensive basic Italian. I can only say like 10 words in Italian, but that's okay. We're learning. Heading back to the main building uh, to do some readings for the next hour and a half or so before we have our special guest lecture on the opera we'll be attending tomorrow. So we just finished our guest lecture on Il Rigoletto, which is the Italian opera by Verdi that we get to see tomorrow evening live in Florence. Uh, but now in just about five minutes, we're gonna have lunch, which is the biggest meal uh, in Italian culture called pranzo. And we hold true to that here at the villa, always having pasta and proteins and dessert. It is truly phenomenal. But part of Villa La Balze here is that we really do focus on the community aspect, calling ourselves a living learning community or LLC like the many back on main campus. Uh, and part of that, we always assist not really in the cooking of the meals, but always in setting the table, making everything ready to eat, ringing the bell to let everyone know that the meal is served, uh, and we call it scullery duty. So let's go learn more. Colleen, you're on scullery duty today. I am, so we're down with What's scullery duty, Colleen? So all try to help out um, the chores that they do. So we have a lot of meals together. Lunch is probably our biggest meal. We have the professors come. They gave us a special guest. that just gave us a nice lecture. Ooh. We all for the organization tomorrow. Um, so we want celery. We get to help put out the food. And we also set the table. Make sure that everything's running smoothly. And then after lunch or dinner, whenever you're doing celery, we like to clean up. Sometimes. Thanks so much, Colleen. Of course. Sydney, what does the tiny fork mean? Dolce! Dolce! Lunch was delicious. Our bellies are 
full and we are taking some espresso to our next class of the day, uh, which is the papacy, taught by former dean of the Georgetown College, Chet Gillis. Uh, we're the only students that get to call him Chet. Everyone else knows him as Professor Gillis, uh, but we are really excited for this class. It's super interesting to talk about the Catholic Church and its history, especially now with all the controversy in the news that we see every day. Uh, and so hopefully you'll get a little glimpse of what this class is like uh, every Tuesday and Thursday. Okay. All right, Chet. What are we learning today? <laughs> well, we're in the late medieval, the, the late Renaissance period of the papacy, and moving into the modern period. We've had, we've seen a great history of the papacy. Um, some of it uh, inspiring, and some of it uh, agonizing. True. Say, yeah. To say the least. And today we'll cover a whole segment of that history. Part of it will be theological as well, because I wanted to say a few more things about. Um, about the Protestant Reformation and okay. the origins of that and the theological differences between Protestantism and Catholicism, which were so pronounced at that time and where people's passions were aroused by these in ways that they would not be today. Uh, so that's what we're doing. And it's very scintillating. It's wonderful. you. <laughs> also heard it's the best question of the lab. Who's your, who's your favorite pope? <laughs> tough questions. I know. I'm grilling no, you. No, it's not a very tough question. Not tough? Okay. <laughs> Now, it'd be between Gregory the Great okay. and John Paul and John, and John the Twenty Third. Gregory the Great, because in the in the early uh, medieval period, he really put the church on the map. He was very organized, structured, and it worked. And he was an intellectual, and uh, it, it made the church function. He really made the church function, and he did a lot of great things. He brought champion in one of them, the calendar, and all that. So historically, I'd say he's one of the greatest, but. I tend to favor John XXIII because he instituted, he announced the Second Vatican Council, um, which was a surprise from everyone. He was seen to be, when he was elected, in his late 70s as a caretaker pope, but they couldn't agree on someone to be pope, so look, well, he's nice, he's easy, we'll get him, and then we'll uh, select someone announce a, announce a new council. And that council revolutionized the contemporary church and moved it from in Robert Bellarmine's phrase, Societas Perfecta, the perfect society, to the people of God, and we're hardly perfect. Incredible. Last question, <laughs> hardest one. Am I your favorite student? No. I'm with the other, you and the other 16. Oh, <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> So we are officially finished with classes for the day. So I'm heading down to meet Colleen and we are heading up to Fiesole to then grab the bus to Florence so we can run some errands in the city. Are you ready, Colleen? I was wondering, you have our good friend Jack here. Woo, let's go. So getting to Florence is really quite easy once you make it to Fiesole. But there is a hill that puts the Leo's house uh, hill to shame. Keeps us in shape though. Our quads and hammies are looking great. Works off the pasta carbs. So I have made it up the hill and barely survived. Uh, and we are now right in the heart of uh, Fiesole in Piazzo Mino. Right here you can see the central square, uh, which turns into a nice farmer's market on the weekends. Across the street are lots of cafes and spots to grab coffee or gelato. You can see the cathedral. And then over there, past those cars, is the bus stop. We use bus number seven to and from the city. It is our saving grace and keeps us going. So y'all, I told you earlier in the day that I needed to come into town <laughs> to get a haircut and I just got my haircut and I have no idea what is going on. I didn't do this um, and I'm kind of laughing so I don't cry but this is part of the true abroad experience and this is not my stylist's fault, this is my fault for not knowing how to speak Italian. Um, but this happened and it took a really long time so I'm not gonna make it back to the villa for dinner. So I'm gonna find a panini and some gelato to grieve or uh, make myself feel better.
our tour of the city wasn't very long, uh, but it's getting a little late and I have some homework to do in order to be able to go uh, to the opera tomorrow evening and escape to Munich for Oktoberfest this weekend. So I'm gonna head back up the hill to the villa, um, but first, gelato. Speaking of gelato, raspberry and chocolate are my flavors of choice, by the way. I also recommend get on Instagram and follow the new page, which the Hoya uh, Villa Balsay resident started this semester called uh, Alato Gelato, where we are tasting all of the gelato across Florence and reading it to see which is best. Be informed on your next travel. So I have made it back to the villa and I hopped right into the shower to try to get this under control, but you can see it is going to be a process, uh, but that's okay. I am up for the challenge. Um, just about everyone here at the villa has settled into doing some uh, readings for tomorrow, doing some last minute assignments, just relaxing, Netflixing before another busy day. Um, but this is my sign off post. I have had so much fun uh, being able to show you around uh, this takeover Tuesday. Uh, I hope maybe it was informative, fun, um, enjoyable for all of you. If you'd like to continue following along uh, my journey this semester, you can follow my Snapchat here. Uh, it, it really is a unique opportunity to be here at Villa La Balze. Uh, the community that you get to build with the other residents, the professors, the staff is just unmatched anywhere else. Um, and the beauty that comes with Florence and Piazza is also so unique, so beautiful, so wonderful. Have a great evening.